Hello, I thought I'd do just a quick video on this little tool that I use here. This is a USB load tester made by DROK or DROK. This is a product I bought on Amazon for $13.99 and it allows you to uh, enter in a current via this little potentiometer here and it connects via micro USB or USB A or USB-C. It works quite well, but as with uh, other products these, this company manufactures, uh, you probably don't get the manual, or you can't find the manual, or you can't understand the manual. So here we go. I'm going to do a, a quick review and uh, how it operates. This is the listing from Amazon.com. You can see that it is the $13.99. It's rated for 25 watts with an adjustable current of uh, 0 0.25 to 4 amps. We will give all that a go and see uh, what type of uh, accuracy we see. Mine did not come with a manual, <clears throat> but uh, fortunately in the Amazon listing there is this page here and uh, this is going to tell you most everything you need to know. I will be using my Regal DP832 power supply for these tests. Uh, as you can see, I'm connected to the 5 volt output right now. The maximum output current of this supply is 3 amps. Um, and uh, I have uh, this cable here, which is a pretty heavy gauge uh, silver Teflon wire with uh, good connections up to this USB-A connector. Let's uh, plug this in and go over the operation. The manual does state that it does not have any reverse voltage protection, so you need to make sure that uh, your positive and negative connections to the USB connectors are proper. We can see that uh, this display, this uh, seven segment display is blinking. That indicates that uh, the load is not turned on. I'll push this little on button and we can see that it stops blinking and we now have a 0 0.25 amps being pulled from the power supply. I can push the set button and this is now giving us a power calculation. This is the voltage times the current. I push it again and it is displaying the measured voltage at this device. The measured voltage here is a little bit less than what is coming out of the supply because of the uh, IR drop of the cable between the two. Let's go over some of the operation. Uh, right now you can see I have this set for 0.5 amps and I am uh, pulling 0.5 amps from the power supply. And I can adjust this current in uh, a live type mode as I'm doing right now because the display is not flashing. We'll go up to 1 amp and we can see here that we're pulling one amp, so pretty accurate. Or I could push this button again, it's blinking, and so the connection is not live. So I'll go down to 0.75 amps and then turn it on. Curious uh, specification of this meter is that it says that it's uh, good for 0.25 amps up to 4 amps. I'm only going to test uh, up to 3 amps because that's what my uh, power supply is capable of, but it clearly will work fine for uh, currents less than 0.25 amps. As you can see here, I have uh, 0.1 amp selected and we are pulling 0.1 amp, amp and uh, this seems to be fairly accurate down to maybe milliamps. Let's take this up to a higher current. Oops, wrong direction. And let's go up to say two amps and see how this fares. We're at two amps. The uh, fan inside my Regal power supply has kicked on and the fan for this little guy has also turned on. Let this sit for a minute and we'll come back later and see how hot this is. I've been letting this uh, sit for a few minutes 
and it is warm to the touch but uh, not uncomfortable at all. The uh, power devices on the back are also warm to the touch but not, uh, not uncomfortable. Let's take this up to uh, 3 amps which will be the maximum uh, value that my power supply can source. So, whoops, let's start increasing this. And at some point in time, my uh, power supply will start to current limit. So we're gonna go up to the maximum point to where it starts to current limit. Whoop, right there, let's back it off a little bit. There we go, uh, roughly three amps. It's uh, showing 14.2 watts and 4.8 volts or 4.9 volts. Now that uh, tenth of a volt is going to be uh, the voltage that's lost in this wire here between the uh, load and the uh, power supply. We're going to uh, let this sit for a little bit and see how hot it gets. Back devices are pretty hot, but and uh, this heat sink is starting to get warm. We'll let this sit for a minute. This has been running for a few minutes now. It's getting fairly warm. Uh, I can touch the sides of the heat sink, but not for more than a few seconds before I want to pull my hands off and same with the uh, devices on the back. This is a uh, power transistor here and this is an LM317. Let's look at those separately. And right there, that's the power transistor that's running at roughly 54C. And the LM317 is at about 40C. And as I move around on the back side of the board, uh, obviously the hottest thing is that uh, power transistor. Let's look at the top. And this is the edges of the heat sink. And the thermal camera is kind of having a hard time capturing uh, the heat on the side of this heat sink. We'll let this run for a little bit longer and maybe I'll just throw in a uh, standard conventional thermal couple and let's look at what the temperature is. I'm going to look at with this uh, thermal couple here just on the side where I was holding the heat sink and uh, we can see that that is 46C. So yeah, that's why it's a little uncomfortable to hold here. I've set this back down to half an amp and uh, I'm going to try it with a couple of adapters. Now here is the problem with this guy is that some of your modern adapters now, uh, the USB power delivery uh, with USB-C, uh, they can supply higher voltages this device has no way to negotiate to those higher voltages. This adapter here is uh, rated for 5 volts, 9 volts, and 12 volt capability, but it will always uh, be at 5 volts, and we will show that. So plug this guy in. Okay, and as we can see, uh, I reset, well, I cycled the power, so I need to turn this back on. We are now at uh, 500 milliamps, 2.5 watts, and 5 volts. Uh, they don't have the appropriate software and connections to uh, negotiate for the higher voltages. A quick recap. I'll apply the power. It comes turned on in the default mode with the load off. 
I'll push the right hand button that turns the load on and we can see that registered here. The left hand button cycles between the current, power, and volts. And uh, there we have it. Thank you and if you have any questions let me know.